Hello, I'm your host, Heather Smith, and welcome to the Accounting Apps Podcast, where we explore the accounting and business apps community. Today's episode is part of a series of six interviews recorded at the Oracle NetSuite Cloud World and Suite World Conferences, which were held in Las Vegas, September 2024. I encourage you to subscribe and add them all to your playlist. In this episode, I speak with James Chisholm, Vice President, Product Management at Oracle NetSuite. James has been instrumental in advancing NetSuite's international product offerings, particularly within the EMEA region. His leadership has helped shape NetSuite's ERP and cloud solutions globally. In this episode, we discuss key innovations and product developments at SuiteWorld, the importance of financial exception management and how AI can provide suggestions and guidance around this area, and Oracle NetSuite's global be local vision and the focus on localization and compliance. On my blog, you'll find detailed show notes to accompany this podcast. And for those looking to earn some free CPE, be sure to head over to the Earmark app and take the quiz for the podcast you're about to listen to. Finally, thank you to the Oracle NetSuite team for hosting me at your conferences. So welcome to the podcast, James. Um, could you please start by sharing a bit about your journey to becoming Vice President of Product Management at Oracle NetSuite? Yeah, that's a really, really good question, and thanks for inviting me, Heather. Um, so I actually started out life as, as an accountant. So that's that's what I, I, I studied, and um, I, I moved into finance um, pretty quickly and a finance manager for many organizations. Um, you know, as it's as typical, you know, we got into a situation where we needed to find a new accounting system. Um, I, I put my hand forward to, to help implement that. Um, and that went well. And the vendor that we were working with said, maybe you should look at doing this as a career. Um, and so I took the plunge and, and, and went off to work for a vendor. I gave up my duties with, um, you know, month-end reports, VAT returns and all of that joy. Um, which was was a struggle, um, but yeah. Then I, then I worked through you know ERP companies from support through to pre sales through to um, global training um, and through to product management and, and ultimately you know that's taken to me me to where I am today as as vice president of product management here at Oracle NetSuite. I love that um, um, you started that journey as an accountant because I know that some accountants have this uh, argument that. Accountants shouldn't touch technology. That's for someone else. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that, that's an interesting one. And funnily enough, yeah, that there, there was always this notion that um, IT departments should be, you know, the people that that, that run these things. And, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not of that mindset. You know, you know, finance departments need you know great tools. You know, and and they should be the people driving those decisions. And you know, I, I thought at that time, you know, that's where I'd want to be and 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 help organisations, you know, choose the right accounting software. Well, hopefully that inspires a few people. So um, we're here in Las Vegas <laughs> at Sweet World. Um, what are some of the key innovations or product developments um, that have been introduced recently, um, and how do you see them shaping the future of the platform? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question, and you know, as you'd have sat through Evan's keynote, there was there was a raft of announcements, um, and you know, interestingly, I think I've, I've you know I've got a take on this. Uh, you know, I, I really liked actually our customer Vitalize Health, um, who came up on stage and you know talked about their experience, and I think actually, you know, the the. The, the, the kind of the theme of what we're trying to get across is, you know, how our customers use the suite. Um, and they affectionately, and again, you know, from an accounting background, bank reconciliation, you know, things of that nature. And, you know, how they've been on a journey to actually utilize the system for things of that nature. So I've kind of dodged your question a little bit there in as much as that, you know, I find that really interesting. And I think, you know, what we're trying to get our customers to do is unlock the power of what they've got. I think if we then look at some of the newer announcements, clearly I'd be remiss if I didn't mention AI. It's all pervasive. It's everywhere. 
But I think the other thing I think that's really useful for our customers and another piece that I really enjoyed was Hilal Cooperman from Oracle and the Redwood Shores, you know, UI updates. I think that's massively important for our customers today. And I think if you weave that into kind of AI, for me, it's about usability. You know, one of the biggest challenges, you know, we've we've just spoken about where I came from as an accountant and getting a system in. You know, one of the challenges is, is adoption. You know, people need to want to use the system and enjoy working with it. So I actually think one of the bigger announcements for me was around, you know, our UI updates and also some of the AI around assistance, um, you know, being able to talk to the system, if you will. You know, I, I think that that's, that that's going to really help our users and hopefully unlock the power of the suite. Some of the other things that we, we do, you know, it's that classic adage, people don't know what they don't know. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So um, to circle back to some of the stuff that you're saying there, in terms of the uh, Redwood announcement, uh, we were we were in a massive tent <laughs> for that for that keynote, and Redwood trees uh, came up uh, 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 amongst the on the roof of the tent <laughs> everywhere. Um, but the Redwood um, and and clarify this um, uh, clarify this if if you need to was was around. Uh, the the customer experience and defining what that was and then sort of being able to, everyone being able to adapt and roll that out? Yeah, it's a really great point. You know, one of the things that, that's, that's easy to do as a software vendor is come up with good ideas. You know, I think actually what we've done is, is we've really put the user first. And I think that's the journey we've been on. And, and I think the Redwood analogy is a good one. Um, you know, we really want our users to engage with the product, you know, enjoy using it. And that, you know, again, using that kind of example of the, the root system and in, interconnectedness, I guess, you know, from a sweet perspective, you know, that's the thing that we've been talking about for many years. And we, we really want to unlock value. And I think, you know, that starts with a user. It starts with a user engagement. So the, the, the stuff that, that Hilal and the team have, have, you know, helped us with, I think is, you know, is really a foundational change for us over the course of, you know, our history of 25 years in the cloud. Mm, mm. I, I really like the analogy as well, the sort of the calming nature of the uh, Redwood. Um, so in terms of, uh, you're talking about how the AI is going to assist with um, adoption and I'm speaking, I'm sort of wandering around and speaking to people at conferences and, and they're like, uh, they want something but they don't even know what it, what, what it actually mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're almost saying to me, the, the person who's coming and doing the implementation doesn't know what they need either. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've, got the, they, they've got the product in place, but they don't know where the next step is and they're trying to be curious, but, but it's quite uh, overwhelming and exhausting. Now, is this new rollout going to surface suggestions and, and, and guide them in places of, okay, this is something that you're going to need? Yeah, so, 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 so you know, we're seeing this a lot, actually. It's kind of that bell curve of adoption, and everyone was super excited about AI, and, you know, it's great, it can write me a poem and things of that nature, and, you know, it's wonderful. But, you know, it piqued everybody's curiosity, and I think then people were wondering about, well, how do I use it? How do I make it real for me? So I think, you know, what, what we've tried to do is kind of weave it into the fabric of NetSuite, not bolt it on, you know, have it easy to use, have it easy to consume. You know, clearly some of the, you know, um, more straightforward, if you will, areas to do that is things like an assistant, you know, you know I want to ask NetSuite something. And I think an interesting one, um, just looping it back to the announcements piece you know we, we were talking about financial exception management and you know again you know with my accounting hat on you know I think that's a great application of it and actually the way that we do it it, it you know feeds into what you've just said in terms of suggestions what do I do does this make sense and that and you know next week will guide you on that and ultimately what you'll be able to do is say actually this looks okay forget about it that will feed back into the model you won't need to worry about that transaction again i think the nice piece to that as well is is that it keeps the human in the loop you know so we'll remove some of the 
you know, you know pouring through general ledger accounts looking for anomalies you know the ai will do that it's well suited to do it but it will give you suggestions and then you can take actions and i think that's one of the nice things you know you know for an accountant and still being able to you know have that overview make decisions based on what the ai is telling you yeah yeah absolutely thank you for that so as someone based in um london how do you see it, um, um, the growth and the impact on the UK and the European markets? What, AI specifically? The, the, the product and, and, the product. and with the product developments. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a very big market for us outside of North America, um, really important. Um, you know, so we're, we're seeing, you know, greater adoption of cloud, um, you know, I, th I think still, you know, there's lots to do. You know, you know, you still see people with on-premise solutions. And, you know, I know in Australia, for example, you know, they've been well ahead of that curve, you know, which is great, fantastic, you know, and, you know, making things easier. I, I, I always say that's because our systems are simpler. <laughs> so, so I'll give you that, that, that out there. And, and, and we're not dealing with, goodness, you must be dealing with 100 plus languages. Yeah. Moving into that area. Well, ex exactly. And, and obviously, you know, you're in the realms of internationalization and, and, you know, all of those aspects as well. So we, we have to factor that in. But we're definitely seeing, you know, greater adoption, greater interest. And I think, you know, without, you know, diving into the, the pandemic and all of those, those challenges, obviously what we saw was a big uptick because people were working from home, people needed access to systems, and you can't have a dusty old server sat in the back of the office, you know. People couldn't access them, they couldn't go, you know, they couldn't go there. So I think that's been fantastic for NetSuite, and I think, you know, we've, we've, we've seen a, you know, a marked increase in activity, and, and the things that we're delivering are really resonating with the UK market. Hi, I'm Heather Smith, and you're listening to the Accounting Apps Podcast. I encourage you to stay up to date with the curated content I'm sharing by signing up for the Accounting Apps newsletter, available at accountingapps.io. Now a quick word from our sponsor. Approval Max makes it easy for businesses using Oracle NetSuite to build robust financial controls across accounts payable and accounts receivable. On average, it helps save 10 days or more per month, reduce 85% in approval times and improve the accounts payable process efficiency by up to 50%. Quickly approve vendor bills, POs, expense reports, vendor return authorizations and sales order. Save time and effort with automated routing to take care of multi-role and multi-tiered uh, approval workflows. Design and build sophisticated multi-level approval processes quickly and easy, easily in Approval Max without any IT support. You can find more details about Approval Max for NetSuite by visiting approvalmax.com. Now let's get back to the interview. Be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to the podcast for further insightful interviews and news from the accounting technology world. Thank, thank you for that. And um, in terms of um, one of the things that, that uh, the company has stated, it wants to provide the world's most localized ERP system. I think it used the word globalization, globalization yeah. with a G on the front. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how is it achieving that? Yeah, so, so actually we, we, we have a trademark that, that we use at Global Be Local. So our vision is, is to have the, the most widely used global ERP, um, but it, to be local. So it feels like it's been built for the individual user in that individual country. You know, that's a lofty ambition. You know, clearly there's lots of countries um, and we have a you know, huge footprint of where our users, you know, actually use NetSuite, you know, which plays into to, to cloud. Um, so in actual fact, my team, you know, what we do um, in NetSuite is we have teams across the globe whose sole focus is localization and more importantly, compliance. So again, you know, reverting back to finance and accounting, you know, taxation, you know, the, the rise of global e-invoicing, things of those nature. So, you know, they're the things that keep my team awake at night. And as I say, we've got teams throughout the globe helping us do that. Yeah, yeah. Keeping them awake at night. Yeah. <laughs> those, those, those compliance requirements, we can't. It will be interesting to see if we can ever get uh, international compliance. 
Uh, that's always been my... my, uh, my I that's, know that the governments like to control it. Oh, well, uh, that's right. Standardisation. Standardisation, you know, like, yes. could, could we ever achieve it? Could the banks achieve it? Could, you know, uh, you know tax authorities achieve it? You know, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> it, it, would, it would be. You know, as accountants, we adhere to international um, accounting standards and uh, accounting is a global language and, and it does seem to be, you know, it is a global solution. It would be... Uh, nice to, to, to push push along that way. Now, are there any... Um, we have talked about the, the, the customers who are kind of overwhelmed um, or they're here at Sweet World and they're curious, which is a word that's been frequently used. What would you suggest they do to, to identify what they actually need within the solution? And what they need to be utilising within the solution. Yeah, do you know, do you know it's a, that's a, a brilliant question. Thank, you know, thanks for asking that. You know, because it is a bit like drinking from the fire hose. You know, we're here in Vegas with you know, lots of announcements. You know, and that can be o- overwhelming. You know, one of the things that we do as a, as a vendor in the cloud is do two major releases per year for our customers, which is great. Um, and there's lots of features and functions in there. So obviously it's a lot for you know, people to you know, consider. You know, what I would say is, and I go back to the Vitalize Health, you know, example, is there's some, you know, really key wins in terms of, you know, core financials that our customers can, can look at. You know, things like bank reconciliation, things like bank feeds, you know, look at the automation opportunities that exist in NetSuite today. Yeah, that's really, you know, really important. And again, you know, things like e-invoicing, you know, the rise of those types of things. You know, we have those capabilities in NetSuite. So I think it's really bringing it back to some of the basics. You know, it's very easy to focus on the new shiny thing or, you know, an area of the business that maybe has not been touched. But I think, you know, for, you know, from a you know, finance and accounting background, you know, focus on the fundamentals and I think there's lots of things in there that the NetSuite user can do and maybe sometimes you know from experience we've seen that you know, people aren't utilizing those tools well enough. Mm-hmm. Well one of the things from the, the lady um, from Vitalized Health yeah, she what she did was she seemed to empower her team to be curious she just wasn't here on her own she said go out work out how, what to do and how to do it and uh, one of the gentlemen actually came to her and said I've worked it out but I'm going to work myself out of a job and she, yeah. she, she was like that's okay we will, we will find somewhere else for you and they did and he was doing, doing uh, different work and, but that's it, it's about yeah, encouraging staff to be It is, yeah and that's a, it's a, that's a really great analogy because you know, what we've said is, is that you know, we want to streamline we want to get the most out of the suite you know, it's not about, you know, working people out of jobs. It's can we add value in other parts of the business? And, you know, if we can do that, then, you know, we've got some really great qualified people. We can start looking at other areas, you know, can we look at FPNA, you know, things of that nature where we can, you know, really add value for the business. You know, maybe take some of that stuff that should just work and operate and then look at other areas. And I, and I think that's been a consistent push. So, you know, if we can get our users into that space, then obviously we've got loads of other things yeah. that we've announced this week you know, as well, which they can move into. But be curious, you know, look at your pain points and make sure you're using the solution that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Late last night I was speaking to someone who had, he said, I just have very core, cool, very, very basic NetSuite. People can't believe how basic my NetSuite is. However, it replaces 10 people. Yep. <laughs> and he said, if you took it from me, I would retire. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what's one key takeaway that you've learned from coming to Sweet World this year? Um, I, you know, I, th- I think, you know, we, we can't escape the AI message. Um, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's such a big thing in the marketplace, you know, so I, th- I think it goes back to the curiosity thing, you know, think about opportunities, um, you know, it can, you know, it can do many different things, um, you know, but certainly look at it with the lens of how it can help your business. And again, look at those key business processes. Mm. You know, it certainly lends itself to doing lots of stuff. But again, you know, I, I just urge everybody to sort of, sort of come back and look at how it's really going to help you as a business. How can you be more efficient? You know, how can you get people working on more value add, mm. you know, areas? Um, 
you know, that they haven't been able to do before. So, you know, AI is a key message. Um, and as I say, you know, for me, one of the key things was around, you know, the user experience. That, that's absolutely key for us. You know, we want people to engage and, again, you know, think about how they're using the system and enjoy using the system. You know, it's, it's, you know we spend so much time working, you know. So, you know, let's, let's enhance that experience and, you know, you know, make it something a bit more immersive for, for the users. Mm, absolutely. So, and one thing I'd just like to touch on with the AI, because our listeners didn't attend the, 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 the sessions, is that... Um, the system is learning on your data and not on anyone else's data. So the whole thing is secure, it's ring-fenced, and it's learning on your data and improving. It's not kind of suddenly starting suggesting other things to you yeah, <laughs> that it's that, seeing trends yeah, happening elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely correct. I mean, you know, I know that's been something that people in, you know, you know have, have been asking about hallucinations and all of those things. But even if we take the direct example, as we've spoken about finan financial exceptions management, that's all on the customer's own data. Mm. That will always reside in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. It will never be seen. It will never be touched by, you know, anybody else, you know. And so those fears can, you know, can be allayed. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, it will look at two years' worth of data. It will refresh every hour all on the customer's own data. So I think that's a really powerful message because there has been some hesitancy and some concerns around security, et cetera. So, you know, we're, we're really confident that our customers will get a good experience. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for um, spending some time with me, um, James. Um, for our listeners, how could they get in contact with you? So, yeah, I mean, they should reach out. I'm, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we're always happy to, to, to engage with our, our customers, users. Anyone's got any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Thank you so much.